the sun goes down and it shines again. Hey guys, this is Poet Richard M. Little Jr. doing live poetry today. In the background, you hear one of my songs called. I forgot what it's called actually, but. My love is now part of it. My love is now part of it. You get that, see that on YouTube or. The new album actually will be. We're, we're working on two more songs. And we're actually. Yeah, the uh, name of the album is called Building. And, uh, or called Force Building, actually. For the words and all the songs written by myself. And the. Uh, some other singers, uh, performers actually perform in my, my, my words. I can't talk to them, but it's okay. It's going to be pretty fun. Anyway, um, again, you can go to YouTube. I'm under Richard Jr. Uh, my Facebook account, uh, no longer Google account. Shame on Google. Uh, took away Google Plus. Um, but Twitter, that'll go off my, uh, at the Battle Lost. Um, Amazon, of course, Little Junior. This is my Amazon author's page. I also have a blog at, uh, at uh, thebattlelost.com. If you can't get to thebattlelost.com, let's see here. Let me get to the other. It's actually through Google. It's a pop blog. And it's actually. Uh, Actual name of the blog was the Battle Lost. The Battle Lost. T H E B A T T L E Lost. Dot Blogspot. B L O G S B O T. Dot. And we just keep on the loud. It's called Save. And performed by Douglas Hank. The Blogspot is probably all my latest things. Oh no, this is not all Savers. This is my bar name forever. Excuse me. Uh, my, I digress with that. So, let's see here. Um, so, a few more minutes because it's not quite 1 30. Another minute and then we'll go ahead and start. It almost looks like they did this for the season. It is a little bit different today. I'm not really sure I like how they've done it, but uh, we'll see what happens. Just another night I'm not sure why it's not giving me the interactive one. Make it quick and come back to this guy. I'm not really sure I like what I'm seeing here. Mm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on. I don't think it's what I wanted, but it's okay. It's still live. Um, All right, here we go. So my first, uh, my first piece will, is called Dreams of Laughter, and I'm going to turn this down in the background. There you go. That's even better, right? All right, Dreams of Laughter. I found the single flower all alone, growing in a field of emptiness, reminded me of how I feel right now. The beautiful color stood out against the rest of the dry, burnt leaves, along with the dying weeds, almost as if to say... That even among all the chaos of this world today, the ugliness, hate, wars, rapes, dying children in the streets, and worse. Yet before they were even born, homeless families, homelessness, it, it just seems everywhere and more that I, with all my beauty, have rose out of despair and sorrow. Its delicate petals grasping for air, reaching out up to the light. Fear not the evil of the night, for the light shall always shine through. The darkest of days, slaying ye nightmares of the diamonds brigade, or the demons brigade. Along with the armies of the dark angels from where the fires of hell burn, turning to dreams of laughter and joy of the innocence of a newborn baby girls and boys, opening their eyes for the very first time, so that we could see the soul of God looking back at us for just a brief moment of time. For they are the true definition of what humanity should be, as they are born of love and only later, through ignorance of others, are they taught about hate. Therefore, if we only teach of love and understanding, hate would in a sense no longer be valid. 
or matter after all. Um, out of the ashes, life shall grow, so never give up on hope. For without hope, we would not exist. Oh, Richard, I'm not here. Thank you. Uh, I hope you like that one. Um, I like that one. It's pretty cool. It actually, it's through all of my photography, flowers, things like that, that I've done over the last year. Um, this one's called Alone Without You. I don't remember this one, but I do do it. I really don't. Do not try hard not to think about you, even though you seem to always find a way into my dreams at night, waking me up from the very restless sleep. Then as my mind begins to think back, I start to miss you so very much. Then I grab my phone, just wondering if you might be home. So I dial your number, but never call. So I write a text instead, yet I never send it. Too afraid you might actually respond or answer the phone or text or letter. And then I would not know what to say. I feel so lost and alone without you. Missing my friend, losing a lover for my life nowadays seems as if I'm missing something very important in it, like the beating of my heart. As sadness now has taken control, causing it slowly to start falling apart as little pieces of it are lost every day. We are apart. And the pain now has become so unbearable, I just sometimes want to cut it out. All the memories of my past play over and over, like it's nothing more than a broken record is getting to skip between the scenes from start to end as the silent echoes of laughter bounce back and forth off the walls throughout my mind. And teardrops begin to fall like a bad winter storm, bringing with the raging floods to wash away all that I was. Then getting colder as the winds of change blow in, and pouring rain turns to hail to destroy who it is I am right now, today. While all of my lifelong dreams have been slowly dying from many agonizing days and nights, and I've been taken over by the frightening nightmares of living all alone in such a lost and broken world, that it's so full of violence and anger where hate has become the king, causing love to become nothing more than a four-letter word that nobody has time for anyways. So even as you move on with your life traveling further down your path away from mine, those feelings that we had once shared are now starting to fade away. So I'm digging a six-foot hole in which I shall bury all the secrets we hold so no one can ever know anything at all. The hardest part is when someone stops loving you, a part of their soul dies away when you... And a friendship like ours, it feels just as if I, too, had died. So now I lay here in the darkness surrounded by questions which bind me to the answers of which I probably will never know. And there goes my phone, but I'm not going to be able to see it. I don't know where it's at. <laughs> it's in my back pocket. Maybe I should check that. I don't know why I'm checking my phone here while I'm doing live poetry, but it's okay. You know? <laughs> All right, that one was called Alone Without You. Next, uh, let's see. True love. I wonder if true love even exists anymore. Do we still know what love means or has it been replaced with something else? I'm not so sure. Love is a feeling that is confused nowadays with one night stands and affairs as love gets lost and thrown away. It's never really there. True love comes from in our hearts and feeds from deep down in our souls. It's not a word for one night stands, but forever as you both grow old. Love is a feeling you're supposed to feel each and every day, not just for a quick ear for your next lay. Love is a slow dance, holding on close together at midnight out in the rain or running in the park in the middle of the night together, screaming, laughing, acting all insane. Love is learning new things while being together, movies at midnight, being best friends and lovers. Love is a word used with very special care, not thrown out to whoever may be there. It comes from our heart and it's fed by our souls, so use it wisely with meaning for the one in whom we want to grow old. Just a little bit of blah, love. Uh, passion of Shakespeare's play. This is funny because I was talking with somebody. It was actually on, uh, I don't remember what it was. I think it was on Facebook. And they said, you know, I'd love to hear, hear a poem with, with the passion of Shakespeare's play. I thought, hmm, give me about a, give me a couple minutes. And here's what I came up with about an hour later. It's called The Passion of Shakespeare's Play. The very first time that they had ever met something or someone born of either luck or maybe even fate had somehow in some way ignited a tiny spark in both of them. Just a tiny little wisp of smoke, no hint of what was to come. At that very moment when the two who never knew the other, the other before that day looked up to say hello to one another from when one brief moment, barely a sand of time, looked deeply into each other's eyes at the exact same moment, causing a chain reaction, the actions of an emotional distraction, which opened the locked windows of their souls. Then proceeded to be naughty as both had a wild streak a mile wide without the proper actions needed learned from the rules and laws that had been handed down since the beginning before love was even found to reinforce the much needed rules of how and when to fall in love. So the two souls with no regard for procedures wanted to feel the touch of another 
while well, much needed love and heat of passion just like that of a Shakespeare's play. For when they saw the other, they knew right away that they wanted to be in each other's arms so they could dance the melodies of all the beats of their pounding hearts. Every day out in the rain of the midnight sun as the stars fell down around them, shooting across the very fabrics of time and space. While granting all the wishes of which they both indeed wished upon and to think all, all happened less than it takes to blink an eye. When the window slammed shut and the doors that guarded the stairway to the heart and the keys to another soul, as the two had not a clue what had happened. But they smiled and said, it was very pleasure to meet you, and since we work together, I'm sure we will see each other around. Then they went their separate ways, neither knowing what had just started brewing, for that a little wisp of smoke shall now begin to smolder, causing a spark, which will feed it a little more every time they spoke, until the time was right, when a single night would cause a roaring, roaring fire to burn out of control, through the forest of forever into the eternities of love's eternal holy. What happens next in the story of poetic love? Well, Still being written as the ink has just started spilling, and the two main characters have only just now started feeling a strange yet familiar feeling of love that has still not been quite born. But please, do not worry. We'll follow this once upon a time until the very end. To be continued. <laughs> that one is called Bachelor Shakespeare's Play. Um, let's see, me and you. This is the very first love poem that I have ever written. Um, it was about four years ago, I think. It was a year after I already started writing. I wrote a lot of dark things. I wrote this sitting on the roof with the Houston Street Bar, downtown Fort Worth, uh, for a poetry thing. And I was drinking a martini. In fact, it's the same martini that you see on Poetry Friends and Love. Poetry Friends and Poetry Friends and Lovers or something like that. I, don't know, I can't remember all my books. Come on. Anyway. Um, that's that's what's the same cover. That's where that was from. It was Houston Street Bar up on top. It's so much fun in the summertime to be able to do that out in the open. Um, they don't do that anymore. I wish they would. It was a great time. It was live poetry. Um, and I, so I sat down and I see this girl. And I thought, you know what? Because hmm. someone had come up to me and said, you know, if you ever wrote a love poem, it would be a, it would be an epic, just like your other poetry you write. So I thought, mm hmm. So you know what I did is I sat down and I started thinking, what did I feel like the very first kiss? What would I say to someone you know, that very first time you fall in love, that feeling for the first few weeks that just, you just can't describe it. So this was for every single woman I've ever kissed and every relationship with, and it's called Me and You. Maybe one day soon on some hot midsummer's night on a blanket under the stars and full moon, I will create a new masterpiece, a new poem, and I will write it all over you. First, I will start in the center of your beautiful body, and I will profess my love for you with nothing more on than my poetic verse between us. I will be writing roses of red and violets of blue between your beautiful bare breasts, watching them closely as they rise and fall with your each and every single breath. Next, I will write just how much that I love you as I slowly come up from behind you so that with every stroke of my pen, you will remember that day and into the night, from the beginning until the very end. I will then start with a brand new verse, and it shall read, that you will always and forever have my pounding heart on the back of your beautiful neck. I will move in just a little bit closer so that you will never forget those words that I have written unto you. Then as I hear you start to moan in a low poetic adulation of orgasmic sighs, I will feel as you start to hesitate, but by that time it will be too late. Because those words that I have written will have found the secret path to down below to the road below through the middle of your naked back and I shall continue just as my words start to transform into a story of how our souls have come together, just you and me, so that you can see just how much I am in love with you. I will then write more about your beauty and what your love has done to me, a beautiful piece of treasured art that I will soon write as those words my love for you will turn into all the colors of our emotions, just as if I had Michelangelo painting in the Sistine Chapel or even Vincent Go on our starry night. Yes, when we are together on that hot midsummer's night on a blanket under a full moon and all the beautiful stars in the night skies, I will create a new piece of poetry and I will call it the story of me and you. I love that one. It is so much fun. Um, hey, Greg. Craig, how you doing, man? I hope you're doing wonderful. Uh, you know, Craig, the, Craig Bird, if you haven't heard from him, go check him out. His poetry is beautiful. It's gorgeous. He's, he's like the king of haiku. Man can throw some haikus at you, I'll tell you. Uh, we've written a couple songs together, and we've done some poetry together, and, uh, you know, he's, he's probably my best friend in the poetry world. 
Uh, he's a great guy. You guys go check him out. Seriously, Greg Bird. Craig Bird. Um, let's see what's next. Time. I like time. Time is funny. You know, my last bucket list before I die, whenever that shall be, would be to learn how to play the guitar and do my own song with my own music instead of writing the words and let somebody else do it. I'd love to be able to do that one time in my life. Um, be up on stage and actually sing a song. Just, that's my last on my bucket list. I've been everywhere around the world. I've done everything there is to do. I'm tired. I don't think there's anything else that I should put on my bucket list, really, except for to see Ryder graduate high school, for one, and uh, that and the guitar. So maybe I have two. That's about it. Um, this one is called Time. Is there anybody really happy about how their life has turned out? Do you wonder what you could have done different? Do you suffer from self-doubt? Do you wish just for once you could turn back the hands of time and go back and make those changes in your life to live a life so sublime? When would you go back? How far back would you go? Now you could change anything you want, but it can only be one chance. Would you know? Would it be the person that you married or for or the one you had to let go? Maybe that job you took or the one you said no. Would it be possible to change your whole life up until right now? Or would it not matter what you did, it would end up the same as it is uh, anyhow? I'm not sure what I would change or if I would actually change anything at all because the person who I am today was because of my past. So let it all fall. All the mistakes that I made, believe me, I made a lot. <laughs> and all the heartbreaks that I felt, all the just hands that I was dealt would change who I am. Or what I have now in sight would have taught me less or changed what I do what I do, or how I would write. I think now after writing this poem, after thinking about it, I would change maybe only one thing. And that would be learn how to play the guitar, then form my own band because they get all the girls. Guys, am I wrong when I say there's nothing like playing a ballad by a beat song at night, singing a love song? Uh, again, that was called Time. Uh, this one's called My Father's Son. Um, so happy Father's Day, belated, because I haven't been on since Father's Day. I hope everyone had a wonderful Father's Day. Now, you, I remember, guys, anybody can be a father. Anybody can get on top, do their thing, have a baby nine months later. But it takes a real man to be a dad. And that means sticking around and taking care of your, God, of your children, no matter who, what, or where. Now, this is called My Father's Son. Um, as I sit here all alone in the dark on, on, on this dirty floor, I wonder if I'm going to be my unchangeable destiny to become my father's son. So full of anger and disgust for not turning out how he wanted me to be. For in his eyes, I'm a failure who would never get it right. Always shaking his head when I come into the site, telling my mother to ask me a question while I'm standing right there in front of me. Oh, I was standing right there in front of me. What the hell did he do this time? Then walking away, making making me feel so little, like I just committed a heinous crime against humanity for just being born, causing me to hate my life. Now I just want to get high, picking up a pipe, rolling it like I'm playing dice, gambling with my life, watching my dreams being completely destroyed. As I watch the reflection of my pitiful self against the backdrop of all the rising smoke while drowning in a sea of deep regret and sorrow, telling myself just tonight, and I will quit tomorrow. But I never do because to tell the truth, I'm an addict living in a proof of the, living with a proof of disease, but no cure, screaming for help, but never sure if it will ever come. As I go numb, so afraid that I will succumb one day to my demons from who I run, for I'm hiding in the darkness of the right and sun, hating me, myself, and I, always trying hard to remember in my mixed up mind to never forget who I finally become. And just like it was fate or being destined to be what I have always been in my pitiful, wasted, pathetic life which I live every single day, waking up in the morning and looking in the mirror at my reflection of the man that I now am, and who he said I would always become. For now, I am my father's son. That's called my father's son. So happy Father's Day. Um, I, again, I've been included in a very beautiful blog that's called uh, Beautiful Minds Poet. Beautiful Minds, beautiful minds Poet. Poets. That means beautiful minds, M I D S and uh, P O E T S dot blogspot dot com. Uh, some of the best best artists and poets and writers uh, are in this this community, and it's a beautiful community to be in. Um, it's called Beautiful Minds Poet. 
you can find them um, in Facebook, you have their blog and everything else. There's a lot of other poets there too, and it's beautiful. Um, my personal definition of depression is sometimes our minds will disagree with our emotions, causing our hearts to stop talking to our souls, causing a lack of communication in all that we know. Um, another one here is uh, poets rarely forget how to write poetry, but sometimes we need to live our life just a little more as we remember the words that we need to say. I've gone five years and I still have birds in my head. I believe me, it just never stops. Uh, I know one day it will, and I'm not predicting that I will keep on writing forever because, you know, sometimes it's just time to pass it on or, or you just can't physically write anymore. Or you just don't care. Uh, a lot of that happens to a lot of people. Um, so when you love somebody so much that you hang on to forever, never letting go, all because they had once made your heart skip a beat and dance with your soul out in the rain. Uh, let me see what's next. Mm, I have a lot of stuff on my site. Uh, as two silhouettes danced among all the stars of the beautiful night skies, two hearts started beating to the rhyme and the rhythm of love with their souls knowing that forever they would be together until the ends of all time. And now a uh, writer who just woke up, picking up his kid, you know, everybody say hi, in a way. <laughs> Hello, this is Oreo. He's getting bigger. A cute little cat. He's funny. This cat is so hilarious. It's not even funny. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Yeah. Okay, so while two, uh, here's another one. While the two stared into each other's eyes for the very first time, their souls held on to each other, causing them to be strangers no more. That moment when your soul accidentally trips, letting go of your heart, then watching as it falls, hitting the ground, and breaking into a million pieces without making even a sound. Uh, I can still smell the laughter when I hear the teardrops fall. Okay, Six Foot Underground. This is about addiction. It's one of my, in my addiction book called Addiction. The Sound of Silence. Living your life in the cold black darkness of your very own living hell with no sunlight shining all around while hiding from all the demons that live inside of you, just looking to be lost, not wanting to be found. Sitting in your empty room while drowning in your tears, falling from all the sadness of your littered past, always hoping and praying for the sunshine for just a few brief moments, but it never really lasts. Tormented by your memories of all your mistakes that you have been hidden inside of your dark, dirty recesses of your cluttered mind, reaching out for help yet again, but this time there's no help to find. Running from all the truths that you have tried so hard to hide, you are just another addict that has fallen to even harder times. Fighting fighting back against all the memories of love and happiness has ever gone bad with the painful scars of all the broken hearts in your life that you've ever had. Every time you try to stand up when your demons knocks you down and with the help of evil pins you to the ground. See, this war we fight against our addiction is one we must battle all alone for it's one that will last forever and it's the greatest war the man has ever known. With the death toll now in billions and kings and queens that have lost their crowns, addiction doesn't care who, what, or where you come from because these demons will haunt you forever until you are buried six feet underground. Poetic art. When I write the poetry that comes from my heart, deepest depths of my soul, my pen becomes a paintbrush and I become Vincent van Gogh. Your love has now inspired me to write about the flowers that I shall send and all the kisses we shall start, a masterpiece of ink that like a starry night be painted. My words will be, now become poetic art. With every stroke of my pen, the ink and the lines will become clearer and the colors will start to spread. It will be a painting of how our love has begun growing to a deeper shade of red that will not only be looked upon, but will forever always be read. Our love will become our classic, like a priceless piece of art. It shall be written as my words will last through the ages, living on forever, like the love we share of you and me, become always a treasured piece of poetic art. And a little area, kind of cool. I like it. His grace. <clears throat> Nothing is impossible when you have his love in your heart. He fought a war for your redemption, and that was just the start. Finding peace <laughs> finding peace from deep down within comes from within his love. Just open up your heart and let him in. And then the glory be his praise, the one from high above, his grace, our king, our savior, and all his glory. Amen. He found me in the darkness, lost in my own design, stuck down with the evil called addiction and retreating into my mind. Reaching down and out to save me, I reached up and took his hand. He gave me the hope and strength, and with his grace, I found that I could rise up, fight, and take a stand. 
He filled my heart full with his love and all his joy, and then he enlisted me in his army of heaven and grace. And now I fight for his glory, which is the pen that is in my hand, no longer struck with the evil called addiction, but the grace of his hand. Fighting hate and true love, I battle his war every day. Against the darkness, all the evils of this world, it's only words that I write down every day. The armor that I now wear is my freedom from all the hate in my heart of this broken world, striking down addiction with my pen, that's my sword. Evil you shall soon be defeated, but the glory of you shall receive by God's own words, as his hate will now also suffer defeat. Thank you. That one is called His Grace. Well, we're going to go a little bit longer than we normally do today. Um, and the moon is full again. If I ever had a chance to be alone with you anywhere in this world, at some time, no matter when, somewhere that I can read and write how I feel about you and all the things I would do to you, and, um, well, I seem to have, well, to tell the truth, I'm not sure what I would do. For your absolute sheer beauty has me frozen right here where I stand. As you paralyze me with your sexy eyes, and I feel like you can look right through me to see who it is that I really am. Well, I feel feeling so completely terrified deep down inside to my very embarrassed soul. So bad it doesn't know what to do. So it hides its head in shame, and my poor heart now wants to only skip a beat and act real cool for just a few moments. And then it pounds real hard through my chest as it feels if it will burst right out, then stops. For just a second as it starts all over again. And I can usually talk. The talk is smooth as ice on a hockey puck with my lips softly whispering those words to make any woman second guess anyone they may be with, causing a chain reaction from the top of their head to the bottom of their women's hair. <laughs> Oh, they are in heat of passion that runs real deep in the way. Then we're off to bed for at least a week or more. But you have me so damn confused, left without any words to say, that I can. You've caused me to stand here and stare and then stutter like a 12 year old boy finding his dad's stash of old playboys as he's seeing boobs for the first time. As soon as you walk into the room, my body shivers in fear, causing me to want to run away just as fast as I can to find my mama so I can try to understand why I'm so. Why I'm now sucking my thumb, she can tell me it's okay to stay away from women like you. I swear you're an angel who has lost her ways. I have never in my life seen such beauty ever come my way. So if I ever had the chance to be alone with you, like right now at this very moment, I would hope and pray that you felt the same and we could save our breaths by not saying any words at all. For we have heard them already a million other times, giving us more time and energy for the night in which will just be you and me making love till we count three suns down and a moon that is full again. Um, let's see. As we look for love throughout our lives, many will break our hearts. Some will even touch our minds. But then there will be those very few who will haunt our souls forever. Um, I can't read this because it's in German, but if you get out on the page, a very nice, very nice little letter that was sent to me. Um, and it's in German, but again, it was beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. The biggest fear of a poet is when his ink can no longer heal a broken heart or hear all the laughter as a teardrop falls, watching their words disappear before they write them down as they fall on deaf ears because there's nobody else around. Sometimes our hearts want what it can't have, but sometimes it want what sometimes it has what it does not want. Sounds like Confucius, huh? Confucius say. Breakups are very hard, but why? When love ends, let's go enjoy the time you had and move on. Why end a relationship hating each other when you spent so much time falling in love in the first place? This one is called We Have Seen Better Times and Places. We have seen better times and places than our moments that God has given us since the night that you and I fell so deeply in love together. And I just want to say to you that I am so very grateful for the chance that we had to become us as before I was so alone like so many now are among us. For you gave me much needed joy and so much more, but now our time is over as the sands of our hourglass have foretold to us and all the love we held for one another is now fading from the light, turning to gray. True love is very special with just a very few that will make it through and for for it is hard to find and even harder to hold. I am sad to say that even though it is time to say goodbye, what we had once, because there is no sense on this, even, even a reason for living in the past. So you know you will never be far from the thoughts in my mind, for I will always and forever care for you and everything that we went through, and it's given us a bond that will last till the end of days. 
So I want to say to you, thank you for all the many years of laughter, good times, and even tears. But most of all, for the love of a very special little boy. For in his eyes I can see your soul. For it is dance with mine when our love flowed as you are him and he is you no matter where you go or even what you do. And that is why he and I will always have love for you. And I'm going to take a break here real quick. I'm going to stay here. I'm so stay with me. Right in his shoes tight, I think, because he wants to go out and play. Um, son, he needs shoe side. Come here, let me have him. And then he's going to be going outside to go. I think he's going outside, but come here. I can't get up. Thank you. Right, you're such a clown. This is what dads do, you know. <laughs> when you're in the middle of live poetry, it's top of the death to tie his shoe. So a grumpy little boy who just woke up and go outside and play and see if his friends are outside. You have your, let me have it. You got it? Come on. Anyway, um, again, happy Father's Day to those out there. And the mothers who are playing double duty, happy Father's Day to you too. And dads, come on, take care of your children. Um, being a dad is not getting on top, getting it done, rolling off and saying goodbye. That's for sure. Being a father is easy. Being a dad is hard. So, man, I'm doing my poetry. Oh. Thank you. So, look, my dish is my neighbor. <laughs> uh, let's see, what's next? Um, faded memories. That's a good one. Still trying to live on the memories of our long and jaded past, holding on to good times, just hoping they would last, wishing we could capture the love I used to know, wondering if I could stay with you or finally let you go. The sorrow that I feel from the pain of a broken heart, so much that I need to say, but don't know where to start. My mind tells me it's time for me to go, and my heart is still confused. My soul keeps saying no. So where do I, <laughs> I can spit that one, saying no. I miss most of the closeness that we are used to feel as days are long and nights. I'm always missing you. Sleeping in our king-size bed, I feel as if I'm all alone, though we are both right here, and there's no one ever home. If you listen to the silence where the laughter used to play, <laughs> you can hear the teardrops falling from my eyes down to my feet. The love I felt for you, though, through all the hurtful lies, is fading faster every day as I start to finally realize that you and I are only shadows of a love that used to be. Just a figment of my imagination, only a dream while I sleep. For we were over long ago as the sands of time run down. Just a faded photo, faded, torn, torn, ah, a torn and faded photograph on the wall of our broken home. Uh, let's see, until the dawn's early light. This is a pretty new one, so bear with me while I, I've only actually wrote it, sat it down, read it maybe a couple times, so until the dawn's early light. All these many years since I have known you from the first day that we had met, I truly thought that you and I belonged together for always and forever, even through all the eternity, until all the sands of time run down. I saw our soulmates with our two hearts pounding out of rhythm of love and passion, beating as one who had been brought together by the glorious powers of God and all his angels flying high up above. Because every single night that we have spent together with one another since that very first kiss, holding on tight to each other, it seemed as if it if, if all the stars that are up in the midnight skies have been shining their beautiful rays of light down upon us, wherever it may be. So that when you and I decide it's time for us to lay down on that blanket during a hot summer's night on a deserted beach, somewhere under the glow of an illustrious show from that moon that is full and bright, just as a gentle, cool, wait a minute, cool, gentle breeze begins to blow on by carrying with it all the secret whispers, secret whispers of sweet melodies while we are making love. Until the dawn's early light when the sun is getting it on with the moon as they have every single morning at sunrise and at night at sunset since the very beginning of all of time and will continue to do so until forever finally falls away. <sighs> dawn's early light. Love and regret. The only two regrets that I have when looking back at the story of me and you is, loving, is not loving you more than I already did and second was ever loving you. You have taken me places in my life higher than I have ever been, then pushed me off that ride, caused me to start falling farther down to my lowest point time and time again. All the love that we have shared, dare I say, was more me than you, no matter what I did and tried. There was never anything that I could do. How much did I love you? Let me count the days, for I loved you so very much and in many different ways. 
They say that love fades so fast, and I do believe that is true. For when it does, it will also leave you feeling blue. You cannot force someone to love you, no matter how hard you try. Besides, you want someone to love you for you. you need, but first, you need to love yourself from inside. True. Uh, let's see what's going on. Again, um, I put there's a couple new posts up on my YouTube uh, channel, which is Richard M. Nettle Jr. Uh, there's one with Ryder, <laughs> my clown, my son Ryder, doing a dance, and bam, that boy can move. And we put it together with, uh, I think it was called Superstar. I don't know, remember the music, but it was a rap song. But it goes so perfect and funny. If you get a chance, go to my YouTube channel, check it out. And go ahead and, you know, subscribe too. I've got more music coming out, more live poetry, more more, uh, more of everything coming soon. Uh, but the new album going to be out here real quick called No, or called <laughs> More Spilled Ink by Richard M. Niddle Jr. Now, again, those are all my words that, I'm, that I've written. Um, and performed by various artists, mostly by uh, Douglas Haynes, wonderful guy, um, and did a good job. I'm not going to say it's all country because it's not. There's country. It's, it's mostly acoustic sets in there and things like that, but it just put more to uh, promote my words so I could become a songwriter in, in Nashville or something like that or even uh, anything at all. That's, what I do is love to write, and I don't care what it is. As long as I'm writing, I'm happy. Um, here's some more short poetry. Uh, sometimes we need to journey through the very depths of hell itself while walking with our demons before we can ever find that angel that will show us the path that leads back home. And we all know that's true. Sometimes the fastest way to get to heaven is try really a path through hell. And again, any man can father a child, but not anyone can be a dad. DNA means nothing to me. As you everyone knows, the writer's not my DNA, but he is my son and I am his dad. And we will always be that way. So, uh, let's see. Hold on a minute. We got more interruptions from Ryder. He, yeah, the only thing he has not learned is courtesy uh, yet. What are you trying to do? Trying to find. What are you trying to find? Dragons. Oh, Imagine Dragons is his favorite. It's called Demons. Demons is what it's called right now. But it's in the street. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know I'm that's rude when I'm on top. I'm on the thing. There we go, right here. Hold on. Let's see what it sounds like. Is this the right one? When the days are Thank you. Um, again, you can see some more and more live and raw po uh, poetry up on my YouTube channel. Um, also on Twitter, Battle Off, and also on Instagram, at the Battle Off. Um, Let's see where else shall we go. And although we will never be blood, we have fought war together because DNA means nothing when you love a child. And Reiner Dean Little will always and has been from the day he was born, be my son, I will always be his dad. I'm a poet, so it only matters how it comes out of my pen, not where it spills, of course. Merlo. I wrote this actually a couple of years ago. It was like my second blood poem or something like that. The taste of your lips upon mine on our first kiss was like a fine red wine. That is if I remember right. I do believe it was Merlot, and I remember that so very well because just before that kiss, I was reading to you some classic poetry by the great poet, Christopher Merlot. As a belt of straw and ivy buds with coral clasp and amber studs, and if these treasures may be moved, come live with me and be my love. That's some old poetry right there. And then with that beautiful smile of yours, you moved in a little closer to where I was sitting because I could still remember like it was yesterday because the candle that was lit by the fireplace was sparkling in your eyes as a tear fell out of the corner of mine. And then it hit me and I began to realize that at this very moment what love truly was. It was right then I knew that I was in love with you and you were only love, you were the only one for me for the rest of my life. And now today, 10 years later, with all the babies that you bore now, and I look forward to the rest of our lives with me being your loving husband and you, my beautiful wife. So I want to thank you for all our memories and the love you have shown to me for making a home wherever. <laughs> so I want to thank you all. Thank you for all the memories and the love that you have shown me and for making wherever we are a beautiful and caring home. So tonight, a toast to you and our love, and our love, Ricky Marlowe, while I'm reading from Christopher Marlowe, 
and a toast to every poet that has ever been born. Thank you, Colin Merlin. This one is, okay, so times are very hard nowadays. Most people can see that. And people like me who suffer from a clinic have been diagnosed with clinical depression, severe, and PTSD. Grabs on, drags you down to the cold, dark abyss of sheer loneliness. Oh, this is my tribute to the great Robin Williams and the millions who suffer from depression and loneliness. I know because I do too. You're not alone, just remember that. You never are alone. If you feel like you're going to harm yourself or attempt suicide or know someone that might, please call 1 800 273 TALK before it's too late. It's suicide is not the answer. The people you leave behind hurt the most. This is called demons. These demons I fight, I know are for real, from the scars on my heart to the pain of my heel. I lay in my bed and try to sleep at, at night, but I lie awake for the bad ones have taken all my dreams and forsake. My fate has been sealed, and with God's help I try, but my world is now over as it fell to their side. I fought with the courage of his only son, but at the end of the battle I was still only one. My entire life has been nothing but one day in hell, and because it meant nothing to me, the faster I fell. I fought back for freedom and for the last of my sons. My fight for right or beat easy, the addiction of my life's still on. All those friends that I have taken with me into my heart, you have taught me that humanity deserves a new start. So don't please, so please don't worry for me, for I'll never really be gone. All those pieces of poetry and poems that I write for you, well, they'll carry on. I hope when you read them that tears starts to call. It's okay to remember me, so please let them fall. For people like me that are hurting from the inside, we were born into a darkness without the light side. We hide out all of our deep sadness from those that we love and can never be treated by any doctor's love. All the smiles that we share and the last we hand out, that only masks our loneliness as we look for a way out. We still love our left children and blame as there's not, but we tried all the choices. Believe me, we fought. So if the darkness doesn't find you, be, don't be quick to cast out. Be thankful for my friend that I missed you, no doubt. Robin Williams fought demons and fought a good fight, but he lost his long battles in the dark. For him, there was no light. So I want to thank you, Robin, for all the great laughs. You've been a light in our battle as we walk down the same paths. I personally will mourn you as my demons may win. But as the gates of heaven open, I will scream, Nanu, Nanu, and I will walk on in. That's one of my, I love that one. If death had a feeling, I know loneliness is how it would feel if the dark, deep, sadness, and depression comes on fast and furious. Turn that down, please. Now, sorry guys, I told you again, I have a son that's very rude that likes to run in and when I'm doing line poetry. Go upstairs and play, please. You can come in. You can sit down. You have to be quieter, you guys can play up in this room. I'm doing live right now. See? All the kids act like this is like the, the community house coming in and out. It's okay, though. It's all good. Uh, I'm going to start this over again. If death had a feeling, I know that loneliness is how it would feel. It's the deep, dark sadness of depression comes off fast and furious. And then when it does, it hits you hard. And then it's never easy at all. The darkness that starts to surround us with a thick black fog that comes from a brewing storm somewhere out in the distance of nowhere, just like a thief in the darkest of nights, coming in to steal all your happiness and joy, then replacing it with deep regret, unmitigated guilt and sorrow. For that is all will now for that are all you will now feel for quite a while. Death is inevitable. It is something that will come to you and I, and to the people we know, either by illness, accident, by God's hands, or even on their very own. There is no laughter at all, as death always wins. But if there's anything funny about it, well, it's just like a game of chance. You'll never know really how, know how, where, who, why, or when. The people that are closest to us are the hardest ones to take, as we mourn for our loved ones while we miss seeing their beautiful face, as it's always hard when they are older and have lived a very nice life, or were taken by God, or lived a very full life, or were taken by God's hands, or even somebody else's knife. But the one thing that I believe is the sad hardest for us all are those that we need to ask. Why did they need to take that suicide phone? The questions that we have are many with answers that are so few. But please, you need to remember from deep down inside, the fault was not on you. We take it so very hard and we wonder what we did. And maybe I should have said to them more often how much I love you. The children will wonder and ask, was it me? Because maybe if I was better, my mom and your daddy would still be home. Or, where they should be. Then a husband or wife who's now left behind will think to themselves, why did I not see it coming? Maybe I should have been home more. All the grieving that you feel has no set time for, oh, <laughs> all that grieving that you feel has no set time for is, 
until it comes to the end. So take your time. Go through the stages that you need to go through. For one day, all this sadness will finally come to an end. And then the anger will come. This I know for sure. Thoughts fill your mind of maybe they, maybe they never really loved me. Or they would have never left me behind. I believe that they are all up in heaven and are much happier than they, are, than they were here. And will be waiting for you with their arms wide open, with hugs, standing with God and all his angels at the golden gates of heaven's door. That one got a little messed up, sorry. I have a rude song. Sometimes when it's late at night, but only when it rains, her heart begins to ache as her souls weep silently while it begins to remember, dancing with him on those wet and wild nights, watching the lightning flash in each other's eyes, and feeling the thunder roll on each other's arms. Uh, let's see here. Um, this one's called Wanda. I just wrote this one. This came out of nowhere. I just kind of threw it together. I know I'm not really much to look at nowadays. I'm a little bit worn out. I've been used up so much that there's not much left of me and lied so many times that it's hard for me to trust anyone at all. I'm all bald and well, I'm kind of getting old and my heart may be missing a few dozen pieces, but that's because I'm going to stop right there because that was full one. That was one of my, that was one of my beta versions and here is the real one. Sorry. I know that I'm not, I'm, I know that I'm not, wow. Hold on a minute. What did I put? All right. Oh, right here. dry my foot socks. I know that I'm not really much to look at nowadays, and I'm a little bit worn out. Those six-pack abs that I used to have have now turned to jello, and I have hair growing in places where most people don't. I've been used up so much that there's not much left and lied to so many times, it's hard for me to trust anyone at all. I'm bald and kind of old, and my heart may be missing a few dozen pieces, but that's okay. That's only because it's been broken so many times before, but it does still pump, I know, because I'm still standing here. And it will even pound every now and then with a little bit of love, patience, and understanding. I know it will be out of, out of melody of love once again. I'm not looking for marriage, no, just to walk on a beach holding hands. And I'm not really looking for a mom to take care of me, no. More like a lover and a friend. I believe that I'm looking for someone who will softly whisper my name in my ear as they hold on tight while we are making love every night from the time the sun goes down until it starts to revolve around us all again. Once she starts making love to the moon up in the beautiful midnight skies, then when the morning comes, just as you and I have done many times before, bring it with her the light of day, which will warm our way into her heart, allowing you and me to switch places. We will make love a few more times, spending an eternity into a forever right under here, under the cover together, with all the stars shining their twinkling lights, which look a lot like fireflies, with you and me holding on day and night to each other for the rest of our lives forevermore. Amen. I don't know why I said amen. That wasn't really a prayer, but you know, it just kind of went with it. Um, I'm very. This one I may not read today because it is so long, but it's my five-part uh, poem on called "Why." Mm, should I do it? We almost got an hour. I think I'll do it anyway. I myself have been diagnosed diagnosed with some severe PTSD and clinical depression. I write to heal and to help heal others. PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder is not only a problem for the military, men, women, and children can also be diagnosed. When in danger, it's natural to feel afraid. The fear triggers many split-second changes in the body to prepare to defend against the danger or to avoid it. This fight or flight response is healthy reaction meant to protect a person from harm. But in post-traumatic stress disorder, this reaction is changed or damaged. People who have PTSD may feel stressed or frightened even when they are no longer in danger. PT, PTSD develops after a terrifying ordeal that involves physical harm and the threat of physical harm. The person who develops PTSD may have been the one who was harmed, but the harm may have also happened to a loved one, or the person may have witnessed a harmful event that happened to loved ones or even strangers. PTSD was first brought to public attention in relationship to war veterans, but it can result from a variety of traumatic incidents, such as mugging, rape, torture, being kidnapped or held captive, child abuse, car accidents, train wrecks, plane crashes, bombings, after disasters, floods, or earthquakes. 99% of all children that are with CPS or in state protected custody suffer from PTSD. This is my five part epic poem about PTSD called Why. To open people's eyes on the very real problem that thousands of men and women of our armed forces are facing when they are released from duty. All of them are heroes and deserve better. 
As he stood there looking down at the enemy, he just beaten through to the ground. His mind was a mixture of anger, rage, and confusion, and more. And it happened so very fast, there was no time to think. There was not even a sound except for the ones that were now in his own head, the sounds from the war that he had fought, like, now over and long gone. The same one that had saved all the lives of those men, making him a hero, but not, not to all, but to some. And as she lay there now bleeding from a beating that he has had, from a man that she had married before the war had first began, she looked up and cowered so afraid to even make a sound. The man right above her was not the same man that she knew before he left the war. He was the, not that same man that she loved. He was not the same man that came home. She remembered their wedding with tears that now filled her eyes. The man that just beat her said for cheating on him, telling him lies. She tried to tell him very nicely that he was only one, but the anger and chaos was all that he now understood. The man was now lost to a war in his own mind. And for him, well, he was only doing what he was trained to do. So he was killing the enemy behind their own lines. The war never ended for him or others just like him. You see, he was stuck there inside of himself with what is called PTSD, with nowhere to run to and nowhere to hide. She never knew what had happened in her, and, and she never knew what had happened to her in that very sad day. The one that she took a beating but never lied, the day that she lay there bleeding and bruised, the day that she took her last breath, the day that she had died. She never knew what she ever did wrong. She never did cheat or lie to him. She only did love him. The only thing she knew was that he was different after the war. With anger and sadness was all that he knew and dreams that were bad. He could never sleep. He never. She tried everything she could to help him, but she never could ask for why. As she lay there bleeding, looking up to the skies, her eyes closed for the last time, she whispered, Please, God, help me. Please, just take me. Please, God, can you just tell me why? Freedom. I mean, why? Part two is called Freedom. This is what I'm asking our government is why. We send our men and women to die in all their made-up wars, to kill and die for just the almighty dollar and oil and not much more. We take them and we train them to kill with no sound. They're, all, they're still often children, most of just turning 18, being trained like in our games. Wow, here we go. <laughs> I'm telling you now, this is the way it goes. Whenever I do live video, I can't ever have peace. This is the way it always goes. They are just still children. Most are turning 18, being trained like in the video games that our small children have now found and play for hours and days and weeks and more. And then we bring them back and they set them all free, fighting for freedom for you and me. Yet they are homeless now with nothing to eat, fighting mental illness, and living on the streets. Why? I ask you over and over again, why? And I still ask you again and again, why? To a government that ignores me and our heroes of war. Why are they homeless? Why can't you house them? Why are they hungry? Why can't you feed them? Why do they hurt now? And I'm talking about the ones who fought for you and freedom's name. You know, the children just 18 who, who, who you taught to kill and now are living on the streets going insane. Why don't you help them like they did for you? Why won't you heal them? They did everything you asked them to. Our heroes are who are dying by their own hands more and more. Why do they deserve this? Why, Mr. President? Why? Why, Mr. House of Representatives? Why, Congressman? Why? So I'll ask a little louder. Why don't you hear us as we scream our silent screams? Why don't you make it stop, please? We ask you again, why? Sign the men and women and families of heroes of war. Part three, remember, he sat on the curb watching the cars come and go. He was very hungry and thirsty, but he had no place to go. He was dirty. He smelled really bad and was been wearing the same clothes for as long as he could remember. And they were all that he had, and now, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, just now, a year or uh, that, uh, the same clothes for as long as he could remember. They were all that he had just now, over a year before he was across the sea in a foreign land, a leader in a war that he didn't believe in or understand, going on patrol three times a day, hoping and praying that he would make it out back. He would make it out and back. He would and hoped that he would not lose any more of his troops that day, that he had already lost so many of his friends, that he gave up trying to learn anything about any of the new recruits that came in. Every day when he would try to rest, he could never sleep because the nightmares he was having were getting worse every day. So he would lay there alone in the dark and would toss and turn while he suddenly would weep. He had nobody and nothing left for him when he would get back home. His new wife had gotten pregnant with a baby that wasn't his, and he had left and had left him for his high school best friend. He still remembers that day that he had gotten that Dear John letter. It was folded up in his top pocket. He would take it out and read it over and over again. When his third, third tour was over, 
the army decided they didn't need him anymore, so they packed up his things and sent him back home. When he stepped off the bus, there was nobody there waiting for him. He had no idea what he was going to do for the last 12 years. He was only trained to kill. He had no job. He had no place to go, for he knew deep down inside there was something not quite right with him. Just then he heard a huge sound, so he dove for cover and looked around. An old fire had just gone by that by a huge backfire. All you could see now was the sheer terror in his eyes, and the people looked at him and laughed. As they shook their heads, he started to shake uncontrollably and started to cry. All he could remember was watching while he was trapped inside the Humvee of all his friends dying. And the only question that was on his mind was, why? PTSD affects all, part four. The only war that she ever saw right there was inside her four walls of her home, the screaming that she heard almost every single day, the beatings that she took in every different way. She never knew which way to turn her head. Every time she left, she always <clears throat> uh, she always came back. He promised her that he would stop, but he never did. And the beatings and name calling got worse. She would never learn. She would never learn. She stayed there because she had nowhere to go. The man that she married made her feel like she was a real piece of trash. He called her names every day, then would beat her for nothing for hours that would last. Money was short, for he never worked coming home drunk, and he would blame it all on her. She sat there for hours being beat everywhere, would lay there without saying a word. But the tears would fall down a tired face almost days, night and night, as the nightmares now kept her from sleeping as they would continue the fight. She never fought in any foreign war, yet she showed signs of what combat soldiers coming home from the wars would show. You see, PTSD could affect anyone, not just men and women of the armed forces, I do know. Women and children who have been through some hell also shine signs of PTSD without firing any guns or getting hit with bullet shells. Just know that this is the PTSD is real. It's not made up disease, and you can't just take a pill. There are days that are worse than the next. So much anger and confusion that you just want to die. Please ask yourself, why? Again, that's for PTSD. And I think that's about it, guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and leave it right there. I hope you enjoyed it. We had an hour of poetry. I'll see you again next time. And... Um, just live, breathe, and write poetry.